All right, welcome family to Tulsa Talk Thursdays. Oh, excuse me, I said it wrong. Tulsa Talks Thursdays, the live podcast where you get to talk to me and whatever special guest that we have tonight. There's no special guest, it's just me. And where you get to call in live and ask questions and answers of me about the Tulsa Real Estate Fund movement, the Saving Black Wall Street movement, the Repairing the Village movement, the Saving the Village movement, the Black Excellence movement. You guys get to participate, talk about that, and talk about how we unify and thrive and how we continue to make and create legacy together. So I want to thank all the good folks of my Facebook fan page. If you're not following it, you are out the circle of trust. Facebook fan page is Mr. J. Morrison, uh, YouTube as well, and we're streaming live from the Tulsa Real Estate Fund uh, Facebook fan page and Tulsa Real Estate Fund IG. So we have all the proper channels going and we have our conference line popping. Uh, again, Q&A session will happen in just a few live question and answers every Thursday with me and the fam. My name is Jay Morrison. I am the founder, CEO, and fund manager of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, the world's first Black-owned real estate crowdfund, uh, the first in the history of America. Uh, we are trendsetters. We are innovators. We are not scared to do the work. We're not scared to take risk. We invite in the opportunity to create legacy and to do the necessary uh, moves in order to earn that legacy. And so here at the fund, we are a real estate private equity fund. We, uh, what happened? dying already wow um we can figure that one out so for those on my fan page on facebook you may want to go over to tulsa fan page if my battery dies i'm sorry i set you up like that um but i want to give everyone some just some background uh the tulsa real estate fund it is uh oh we got a fancy board done by the great ernestine morrison and queen jp there should be a space in between here but i ain't gonna say nothing <coughs> Okay. <laughs> you guys can call, you too can call in to tonight's podcast. I don't want to talk too much tonight, to be honest. Um, I do want to thank everyone who came out to the Black Wall Street Ball two weeks ago on August 17th. We had the second annual Black Wall Street Ball here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we were all fresh and clean, celebrating Marcus Garvey's birthday, celebrating our excellence and the launch and announcement of the first five deals in underwriting of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Underwriting, I mean, these are deals that we are looking to participate in, that we are vetting, doing our due diligence on, and making sure they qualify for us. Let me take my fancy headphones out because I feel like I'm yelling. Um, and I don't, they don't need any promotion either. So, um, we're really excited as we are, we have over, I think, 315 units and underwriting right now. So from apartment complexes to commercial real estate buildings to historical properties, we are constantly doing the work uh, of receiving deals because our goal is to be able to be the rich uncle and a private equity partner for socially responsible investors and developers all throughout the country and entrepreneurs. We want to back your deals. We want to partner with you on your deals. We want to be a private equity, preferred equity, joint venture partner from really, really smart and qualified people who understand social responsibility. We want to be your financial partner and, and backing and backer. So uh, to learn more about submitting deals, go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com to learn how to invest with us and be a what we call shareholder or fractional owner of these deals. So that means whatever we invest in, you too have invested in once you become a shareholder and partner. So that means whatever we own, you too own. So if we own 315 units, you too own your share of 315 units. If we own 40 acres of farmland, you too own your fractional share of 40 acres of farmland. And so it's about ownership here, about legacy. Um, and today's topic was unify and thrive. And all I want to say about that, and we're going to go to our question and answer session. So, guys, feel free to call in for those on live streams and on, yeah, the live streams. Feel free to call in. Um, what I mean by unify is exactly what 11,000 and I think over 900 of us or 700 of us have done right now, which is pull our resources together, pull our talents together, pull our energy together. 
uh, to build something greater than what any of us have on our own. And so it's not just investing in a fund, it's about investing your talents, such as all the half dozen or so people in a room who are contributing their talents towards us continuing to control our own media and narrative through this Total Talks podcast, contributing your talents as an investor, as an entrepreneur, as a uh, someone on a legal team. Y'all missed a, a number? You see what I'm saying? They missed a the number, King. We got it. We got it. <laughs> if you were trying to call in and having trouble, <laughs> if you were having trouble calling in, who's, who's taking accountability? I do. Ernest, Ernestine Morrison, uh, excuse me, Ernestine Johnson, um, <laughs> <laughs> takes full responsibility for, yeah. I do. I own that Right. Okay, well, that's a Morrison thing. Accountability. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, you know, Unity for us is we really look at our fund, and it was really cool in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when we were there uh, about a few weeks ago, about a month ago. Um, we met uh, one gentleman in particular who was a Caucasian male, European-American, white guy, who's an investor in our fund. And it was great to get his perspective of why he invested into the fund. And I think the fund is a great vehicle for us to unify communities, to unify different races, ethnicities, different geographical, you know, areas where everyone chips in for our participation of a black managed and black owned management company that manages this fund and that where we can control the dollars of all nationalities, of all races, for the benefit of social good, social responsibility, social advancement, and most importantly, I guess, economic advancement. So the Tulsa Real Estate Fund is open to all nationalities, races, ethnicities, religions. It is a unifier as a financial vehicle. Um, the great part about it is that this fund as a unifier is owned and managed by a firm that's 100% black owned. And that's the real cool part, is that everyone can invest in it, but it's managed and controlled by us. And I was thinking, because within our entire enterprise of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund and the Jay Morrison Academy and Easy Funding and the other entities and you know initiatives we have, most of our staff and most of our efforts are towards the African community in America or Africans abroad, black people. And I think it's important that we start to introduce some diversity. And just like large white-owned companies have their diversity divisions and their diversity initiatives, I think it's to be, you know, our priority is going to be the focus of our community. But maybe at one point we start having some intentional diversity because I think diversity does breed some excellence as you get others' experiences. And, you know, we brought in Javi, which is our Afro-Latin brother, who's brought in a lot of diversity into the organization, right? So um, I don't know. I'm just rambling. Let's get into Q&A session right now. Uh, so again, guys, this is the number you call. I don't know what it is, but you can see it on your screen. For those on the phone, you've already called it. Once you get in, you're going to hear the prompts of how you ask a question. It's star six. And our moderator, Queen Jazz, the light skin, light skin queen, she is going to get over to you. <laughs> what, Queen Jazz? <laughs> represent represent you. Hey, how you doing, King? Peace. Hey, what's up, King? I'm part of Trev Life. Um, Trev Life? Yeah, you already know. Um, Can we turn this up, please? Bro, you cannot do the corner class too and don't come down here again, bro. You got to put us on the list. Oh. You know what? The hardest part. Listen, listen, King, the hardest part of my whole day was this morning when I announced the 10 City Corner Class Tour and then got all the spots where we, where we missed. And I wanted to do 25 cities this year. And the whole team said, no, we can't do 25 cities, especially Ernestine Morrison. Um, <laughs> so I really felt stressed this morning because I'm like, yo, I want to go to Oakland. I, I got to go to N.O. I want to go to Miami, too. I want to go to Alabama. I want to go to Boston. So I don't know what we're going to do, man. I, I don't know, King. I, I, I feel bad because New Orleans was so lit last year, too. I, I don't know. I don't know what we do. Yeah. Yeah, look, I appreciate it. Look, please reconsider whatever you need to stress the budget. Can't go 25, make it 15. All right, I'm, I'm going to talk to the team. Listen, we about to do a, a, a corner class uh, collection plate. These corner classes ain't cheap. I got, I got, a, I need security this year. We got, we got the video team. We got this. So we're going to do a corner class collection plate. 
And if the community responds, then I'll go to some more cities. How about that? Deal? Hey, there you go. Look, all you got to do is throw up the Trump life signal in the sky. You already know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> all right, love, King. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing, King. Yeah, everybody watching, we have announced the 10 City Corner Class Tour, Corner Class 3 Tour, our third year doing a Corner Class, the most innovative financial lectures on the planet. Uh, we're starting September 4th in Brooklyn. Then we're going to Philly and Baltimore and on to seven other cities after that. Last year, we did 32 cities last year, actually. No, we did, no, we did 26 cities last year, 32 engagements. So some cities we did multiple times. Um, but this year, just 10 cities. Apologies if we are not coming to your city because 2019, we will be hitting more cities ever in the Corner Class 4 tour. But for Corner Class 3, we just launched Tulsa. I just got married. Just had the Black Wall Street Ball. Trying to catch my breath right now, but uh, we will try to sneak in some cities if we can. So whoever's not, uh, please check my Instagram, check our fan page for the Corner Class 3 Tour updates. Oh, my video team showing out, you know what I mean? They want to go put it on the screen. On, on, on a, they want to put it on the screen on a Tulsa Talk fan page. So if you're on a Tulsa, Tulsa Real Estate Fund fan page, you'll see the Corner Class on the screen. If you're on our Instagrams, just simply check our last post and you'll see the Corner Class Tour dates for your... 10 cities or a city in your area. All right, next question. What we got? Caller 737. Um, when, my name is David. Hello? Mm-hmm. You, yes. you on King David? What's going on, Jay? What's up, King? Yeah, so uh, I have two businesses um, and making great money, and I would like to know uh, when will it will be a good time for me to fly to Atlanta. I just live in Atlanta, and I would like to meet you in person. Okay. To, uh, to talk about some investment options that I can do. I'm 26 years old, making great money, and uh, I love what you got going on about the real estate and things like that. And um, I would like to know, you know, if we can set up a you know one-on-one -on -one meeting that way to break everything down, or if there's a class that I can attend in person to learn from you uh, to become a mentee. And um, you know, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Right. I'm ready to invest. That's I'm love. Ready to start all right, so first and foremost, let me start mentoring you right now. You're 26 years old, okay. making some really good money. And I've been there before. So my first piece of advice is keep it. Spend it slow. Spend it so slow. So that's my first bit of advice. Is at that age, if you do the right things with it and you're financially responsible, you can set yourself up for a long time. Um... We do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, what I will do, Queen Jazz has your number, right? I think she can pull it off the screen. Uh, I, have okay. I don't think so, but... Uh, she does. Can, yeah, she, she, she's looking at it on the computer. You can't see it, but we can see it. So your name's David, right? Yep. All right, so Austin, Texas. Also, okay, so David, we're going to take down your number, the number you just called from. I'm going to have one of our wealth education advisors give you a call about setting up a one-on-one -on -one consultation in preparation for some coaching or maybe investment in Tulsa or whatever other kind of strategic partnership that may come from this synergy session. Uh, so Queen Jazz is taking your number and name and we'll get someone out to you. For those of you who also are interested in a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to sit down face-to-face -face or a Skype or FaceTime or to get one-on-one -on -one coaching for six months to a year with either me or an associate coach in our organization, you guys can call our sister company, the J. Morrison Academy, at 1-844-JOIN-JMA. Just spell it out on the phone. 1-844-JOIN-JMA to talk to one of our certified wealth education advisors who can help you with a free financial game plan and to see and assess your situation to see if you are a good fit for working with us. David, since he asked, is going to get a special call from one of our top uh, advisors uh, to see if he is a good fit or just uh, to schedule a consultation so he and I can chop it up. Everyone has the opportunity. Um, I try to be as accessible as possible. I mean, there is a consultation fee, of course. I mean, time is money. But we make sure that we're accessible and that we're relatable and that we are helping everyone empower uh, themselves and their family wherever they're at in their uh, financial journey. So, Dave, I thank you for calling and contributing, and I look forward to us Sitting down, maybe grabbing some lunch and, and doing a mastermind. Okay. All right, Queen Jazz got him. Mm -hmm. Cool. Can someone 
someone asked on Facebook, can you review pending investments with the family? Can I review pending investments? Oh, okay. That's a good one. Yeah, I can do that. So, t Ref family, that's, that's such a good one. I don't know how we overlooked that, I guess, because last week we weren't on. Um, we have been, again, I mentioned underwriting five deals. Uh, so I'll run through those five deals with you. I th did, we, did we put them out in a newsletter? The five deals yet? No? Okay. Did we do the whole video? Yeah, the whole video. So they have that mm -hmm. in their emails? Mm -hmm. So Tulsa family, if you check your t -Ref family, if you check your email, and I'm going to ask the team that's resend it out tonight. Okay. So for those of you on live stream who want to know what five deals we have in underwriting and the details of those deals, go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Put your name and email in our email list, and you'll, if you haven't already, and you'll be eligible to receive this email we're going to send out by tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, with our seven-minute deal uh, a link to our seven minute deal video which describe the seven deals we're working on which are 107 units in, in, in New Jersey 96 apartment units in Florida uh, 30,000 square feet of over 18 units of commercial space here in the Atlanta area uh, the purchase and acquisition of the original Black Wall Street two commercial buildings of I believe 33 units and Missing one, missing one, ATL, Jersey, Jacksonville, Black Wall Street. Here. I said that one. There's another one I'm missing, but that part. So, and we have been talking to different, oh yeah, in D.C., excuse me, in, in a DMV area, we have 49 units of affordable housing between D.C. and Baltimore that we are also underwriting. That's over $29 million of deals that we're underwriting right now. Uh, we have a contract on the 30,000 square foot commercial building that is already contracted. We have letters of intent and other conversations with the other ones. This is not a guarantee that any of these deals will be approved by us, that they will close, that if they do close, they'll be successful. I have to disclaim that, or if not, they're going to be trying to aim for my head. So, uh, but this does mean that we are at the table. We have a seat at the table and a table that we built and that we will continue to underwrite our participation in deals as they're submitted to us and as we tap into our relationships on the ground. But we are looking at uh, a lot of public-private partnerships with different, different cities to redevelop neighborhoods. Not that we're going to develop the neighborhoods, but we want to fund developers who are developing neighborhoods. Remember, Tulsa Real Estate Fund is not a development company. We are a private equity partnership company. We are a joint venture company. We are a mezzanine financing company. We are the capital partners for socially responsible investors throughout the country. And you can participate in the crowd and being an owner and investor in this company by going to TulsaRealEstateFund.com, investing as little as $500, although our average investment is about $1,000, um, and have ownership and, and shares of this movement. We uh, are aiming to raise $50 million over the next less than a year and prove to the world what it looks like when we unify our economy. Also, the Submit a Deal button on the website is now available. So if you're looking at Yes, if you do want to submit a deal, you can go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com and go to Submit a Deal button and submit your deal for joint venture partnership. Next question. i got to fix my posture. My wife's going to say something. Hey, hey, what's up, Jay? Uh, I'm Monte on your live, and... Everybody on uh, Instagram Live, we can't hear you, and we've been complaining about the sound, so we're messing a lot of your information, so I don't know if you can uh, try to fix that. Why is a that? lot of people that's missing your information on your Instagram that's Live. That's my Instagram Live right there? No. Is the volume up? Mm -hmm. I got a new yeah, phone. Yeah, the volume keep on going in and out. It's like we hear you for like a good minute or so, then it goes out, so hmm. we've been missing a lot of information since you've been live. All right, I, I apologize. You know what? I got a new, I cracked my screen on my phone and I got a new screen. That might got, I don't know if that got something to do with it or it could be my new case. Yeah, it sounds like maybe somebody like maybe covering the mic like here and there. I, I don't know, but it's like a lot of people we've been complaining about the sound that we uh, can hear you and I've missed like a lot of your information. All right, so here's the good news. We're going to try to fix it. Second piece of good news 
is this whole conversation will be on our iTunes podcast if you want to listen to it, or it's being recorded on my fan page, Mr. J. Morrison on Facebook, or the Tulsa fan page, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, or you can jump over to the Tulsa IG right now, Tulsa Real Estate Fund Instagram, where the sound, I believe, is better. And in Tulsa, okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you for the information. I appreciate that, man. And what? Okay, and it'll be on Tulsa YouTube tomorrow. But, but thank you, King, for the correction. And again, anybody on Instagram, if you can't hear me, um, you can call in, you can watch the replay, or jump over to the Tulsa fan page or Tulsa Real Estate Fund IG. Uh, not the fake ones. It's like five fake ones, the real one. And you can watch this live stream there if you can't see it on my IG, but I apologize. All right, next question. Okay, we test this out. Oh, can we yeah, test what it? Up, bro? What's up, King King? What's going on, man? This is Danny calling from Los Angeles. Yeah, you got that L.A. vibe with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, look, I, I wanted to uh, step out there, man, and thank you. You know, first off, from the bottom of my heart, man, for doing what you're doing with the fund, because this means a lot to me, and it means a lot to my family members who didn't believe that something like this was possible. So when I tell them, yo, I put my money into this fund, and we raised this money together, they look at me crazy, man. They can't possibly fathom that we're doing it. Right. So, you know, I just want to step out there and, and say thank you for that. Um, also, man, like, you know, I've been investing since 2016. I've done about seven rehabs out of state, about 10 wholesale deals, and I'm kind of starting to plateau. So I'll be at the corner of class when you come to L.A. I'm coming to you guys for some next level coaching. But I wanted to call in today because, you know, when you said you were bringing everybody to the table, man, my stomach kind of hit the floor because I feel like, man, we've been ridiculed and exiled by so many of these other communities for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, they kept us on the outskirts for so long, and they've used the fact that they've done that against us. And for us to turn around with open arms and bring them to the table, I just don't know what to say, man. Like, I can't imagine right. mixing my money with any white people right now. Well, here's because the whenever <laughs> black people have been in close proximity to white people, it has never gone well for us. So I right. just wanted to see if you could expand on why you're thinking about doing something like that. Right. And, King, those are such legitimate concerns. And here's how I break that down. And I hope everyone stays on to hear this explanation. Well, one is that legally, as a fund, we can't prohibit anyone from investing into the fund. Right? We can't segregate as a business. Understood. Right? Um, yeah. Secondly, what we will maintain through integrity and through my word and being the fund manager and, and our partners is that the fund will stay 100% uh, black managed, right? So our management company is 100% black owned. That management company manages the fund. The fund is open mm -hmm. to all crowd investors, but we control the fund's mission the fund's capital, the fund's choices, right? So when you look at other communities and how you said like they box us out from different opportunities, which many times we have been exploited, that's proven and boxed out, they've never had a problem accepting our money though. I can't say never, because I mean, it was a time where they didn't want our money, but I think they wisened up right. enough to know that, hey, we ain't gotta like them, but we can definitely and invest and leverage their dollars, right? Hence all the banks and, you know, hedge funds and everything else. So what we're essentially saying is we're not going to segregate and couldn't if we wanted to, but we don't want to. I don't. As a fund manager, I don't want to segregate. I want to manage billions of dollars of Chinese capital. I want to manage billion dollars of European capital. I want to manage million, billions of dollars of African capital. So for us, we should be excited to have other nationalities dump their money into our fund, backing our ideas, our vision, and our socially responsible investments. As long as we are in control. That's the issue, is that we start allowing people to invest in our ideas and then we relinquish control. And so yeah. then it becomes their vision and not our vision, right? Like the, like, you know, the history of the NAACP, where it was run by Jewish people. Because they funded Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Or the Vanguard. Yeah. So 
We're, we're, no, we're not doing that over here. I'm not, I'm not saying that. So no, let, let's not misinterpret that for that. Not doing that. But we are, we are, uh, we are saying, and I, I was kind of joking, but somewhat I was kind of paying homage to all of us and our growth as a company. And I was saying, when you look at a big white-owned firm, right, European-American-owned firm, because they're so big and because there's usually not enough minority, quote-unquote, opportunities, they're almost forced mm -hmm. to add in some kind of diversity, right? Like a Pepsi, yeah. Coca-Cola, a Ford, or whatever. So what I was saying to myself the other day, and I was just sharing with you guys in a goofy kind of way, excuse me, was that it's kind of cool that under our brand umbrella, we uh, employ or we are engaged with probably 30 to 40 or so vendors and staff members at any time. And 99% of which are of African descent. And so I was just saying, as cool as our company grows, as the Tulsa Fund has now made history, as the J. Morrison Academy is now number 588 in the U.S., the fastest growing companies out of the Inc. 5000. And I was saying, it's cool that we can grow and have a company with reverse diversity. Usually the diversity is we got to be included in somebody else's big system. And I'm just saying, it's cool that we're growing an organization that may be forced one day, we're well not forced, but may introduce one day having a reverse diversity program where it's so big and so black owned and so successful that we have a diversity initiative to allow other ethnicities into our organization the same way they reverse it and allow us into theirs. So that's talking white people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but what I'm just trying to say is that when you think about it reversed, it's just uh, irony is, is, is all I was kind of saying by it. It's just our, it's, it's ironic that, you know, we can build up our own so strong. And I, I'm not going to lie. I do believe that other ethnicities, other, not just other meaning black and white. I'm saying no matter who's the spearhead of a company, I believe a company having inclusion of different experiences, life experiences, cultures, and thought processes, I believe it makes a healthy company, to be honest with you. We are intentional about giving our community more opportunities because we've been so oppressed and, and so uh, uh, stagnated or starved of opportunity, right? But just generally, as a businessman, just in general, I mean, and, and, and Bob Lee Johnson's wife, what's her name, Deborah Lee Johnson? Deborah Johnson? Mm -hmm. Deborah Lee? Deborah Lee? She said it at a conference I was at, she has a Chinese or Asian, excuse me, uh, like president of her company and, and, and mostly black folk, but some white folk and others. And she said how that really helps the health of her company. And again, I'm not here to try to sell Tulsa Fund on a new mission or new whatever. I'm not doing that. But I'm just saying I do think as a businessman that the contributions of other walks of life do help the health and there's, there is magic in diversity, and, 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 and white-owned organizations have seen that as we have contributed to their success. And I think that happens twofold, is my long story short, or long story long. Feel me? Well, I appreciate you expanding on that, man, seriously. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I will stay consistent, so it ain't no big shockers. But, um, you know, I do want to be clear with the fun that, you know, we don't segregate, uh, can't segregate, won't segregate that we do want to manage as much capital in the world that we can manage. Uh, but we want to make sure that we do it with, uh, without ever selling our soul or selling out our mission, for sure. Okay, I got you, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks Tref so much. Life life. Let's go. Your Tref Life. See you in L.A. All right. Any other questions in the queue? Live stream popping. Um, somebody on Tref IG said... I'm in the UK. Can I still invest? Yeah, so for all those UK, international, abroad investors, you can invest in Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Uh, each international territory has its own additional fees, but um, that's spelled out on the site once you begin your investment process. You can also look on the FAQ on our website, the Frequently Asked Questions. It'll give you some of those questions.
uh, potential fees for depending on what area you're in, but you still can invest in the fund uh, through your, you know, being an international investor. For sure. Uh, maybe call her 404. 404? You out here? Four zero four. Hello. Oh, how you doing, Ken? Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing, Ken? Oh, I'm great. Hey, Thank you. Um, I'm actually uh, um, I'm just starting out investing, and I'm doing some wholesale deals. So really, this this question is for anybody that's online right now. If you're actively buying properties at this time, would you be interested in doing business with me? Okay. So you're 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 just making a uh you're just announcing that you are doing some wholesale deals. You might have some inventory, and you're looking for buyers. Yeah, I'm looking for a buyer. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Well, I would I say, some, go ahead. I do have some properties. I live in the McDonald area, and I do have a few properties that are still by owner under contract, and I'm looking for buyers. So if there's anyone online right now who's actively buying. And doing things and flips. These properties are great for rental properties. So it's something that you might want to add to your catalog. All right. Hey, I'm not, I'm not mad. And um, if you uh, send an email, what's our deals email? Are we use the info? You can send it to info. Okay. Yeah, send us um, what you got over there. Maybe some of our students here in the city, some of our coaching clients who are looking for some. Rental deals, a portfolio, you know, portfolio might be interested. Send an email over to info at Tulsa Real Estate Fund dot com. What's his IG? And what's your and what's your what's your uh, IG or how will people know it's you? Um, my IG is actually um, I'm actually a film student, so my IG is Zigzag Film at at Zigzag Film on um, IG. Okay. Or you can send me an email at iLegend Investing Group. At gmail.com. There you go. You just got you a, a lead of cash buyers and potential Great. joint venture partners. And thank you for, for joining That's the call, great. participating, and being in the mix. That's what it takes. You, you got to be on your grind. You got to be immersed in the business. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can help continue to mentor you and uh, give you investment opportunities through the fund. Appreciate it, Kim, for providing this platform for me to get this out here. All love. What's about unify and thrive? It's a nice topic. It's about unity, collective unity, holding each other accountable, challenging each other, bringing our talents and gifts to the table. See, I want to say this: it's okay to use people. It's not okay to misuse people. So we have to use each other in healthy ways and not misuse each other. And you know, this is how we win with unity: is when we are not being crabs in the barrel, trying to pull each other down, or not being crabs outside the barrel who have made it out and forgot about those who are still stuck. So we all keep that village mentality. And that's all the team, myself, my wife, all of us, all we're doing is leading by example and trying to re-energize or re-infuse this culture we all grew up with. We all know a little taste of it, of that village lifestyle. Now, it might not be in our generation, but it got passed down enough through our parents' generations of where back in the day when your neighbors could raise you and they could yell at you and they could hold you accountable, back when the, the village raised a child. And we said at our conference, it takes a village to build the village. It, it don't take just a man or a company. It takes the whole village to build a village. And our village has been, as Malcolm X said so eloquently, politically oppressed, economically exploited, and socially degraded. And we need to step our game up. And that's all this is about. This whole mission and movement is about repair. It's about being superheroes in a world full of villains. And we will continue to lead along those lines. Next question. Hey, Jay. Hey. What's going on, Ken? How's everything going? This is David giving you a call. I think I had to call on my wife while I'm so sorry. <laughs> all good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I, I heard that you were talking about that you have some units in your portfolio that you were working on, and actually one of my business is Valley Trash, where we help communities, uh, uh, specifically multifamily, we help increase their NOI. And um, 
um, I would love for us to still sit down and talk, but if you can shoot me over an email, I can give you my email, or you can give me yours, and then we can talk from there when it comes to your multifamily deals. We can try to work together in partnership on that. Absolutely. So what I would uh, have you do is, Dave, just send an email over to info, I-N-F-O, at Tulsa Real Estate Fund dot com. And then I'm going to task. Yep, Tulsa. Yep, Tulsa Real Estate Fund dot com. And I'm going to task Queen JP to monitor you and the other info emails that came in and see if there's some synergy between what you do in the multifamily space and our underwriting team for us. Uh, we're participating, hopefully, and will be in the future in these deals. Um, but less than 10% of our portfolio would be deals that we actually develop ourselves. We want to focus on the private equity side and the private partnering and JV side and really funding okay. developers and investors. But that still means you could be a great resource, um, but we want to help partner and help you know, other investors grow their portfolios and, and have a reliable equity partner, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but thank you for that contribution as well. And we'll make sure that we'll check that email. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yes, sir. Spin that. Good evening, King. Good evening, King. Uh, Maurice, I'm from Georgia, originally from Jersey. Um, I just want to add to the point that you made about two or three calls back regarding opening the fund up and having it available to people of other cultural groups. Yes. I just want to say that, you know, as a community, black people historically have led uh, the direction of anything on this planet, whether it be fashion, uh, cultural things, food, cooking, whatever you want to look at. And like you said, as long as we're in the driver's seat as far as the capital that we control and the things that we choose to invest in, we're going to lead uh, wherever investors decide to sign on with uh, trust. We're going to lead them in the direction that we see fit. That's going to grow our vision to, you know, expand our community and provide the better opportunities for us. So, uh, again, I just want to salute you for what you're doing. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Thank you so much, Ken. Uh, definitely back here uh, supporting my wife, myself, and uh, our children. We're definitely looking forward to some of the deals that are coming up. And we're looking forward to just having a fruitful future. Being investors and also founders, co-founders of Chuck. Absolutely. So appreciate you and uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. All right, y'all. Tell, tell the wife and the family hello. And um, thank you all for being partners and supporters and just good village members, right? That's what it's about. Like, we, we are supporting each Absolutely. other. And thank you for that. Uh, before we go to our uh, th Thanks, King. Before we go to our next caller or question... I did want to uh, elaborate on, if you notice, for those who are newer to my brand and our brand, uh, most of the greetings that I got, people refer to me as King or King J, and everyone that I greeted, I greeted as King or Queen. This is all part of our repairing the village and our unity is about us intentionally elevating each other. So I quite honestly enjoy when people call me King all day. It makes me feel good. When they call me King J every time one of my staff needs me to review these many documents and initiatives and campaigns and videos and emails and everything we got going on. I love when they say King J, King J, King J. But in proper retribution and reciprocation, I am also reaching out to Queen Jazz and King Javi and King Avery and King Jean and Queen JP and Queen Ernestine and on and on and on and on, and we reciprocate this elevation of each other. And so even when there's tough conversations and we're not so fond of each other or not so fond of things that maybe we've done or have executed or not executed, <laughs> we still elevate each other in our conversation. So I just want to give you all that. What we are creating is bigger than just a fund. People can't understand the secret sauce of it. This is really repairing the village. The fund is just a vehicle within this whole village. It's like a grocery store or a bank or, you know what I mean? It's just one infrastructure of the whole village. And then it's be our, our school and then our hospital and then everything else that we need as a village, we are intentionally creating those things. But in order to have, in, a, in, a, in order for the village to unify and thrive, tonight's topic, the village gotta have funds. It gotta have capital. 
And we just got to have a, 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 an, an integrous and astute and a wise village leader, an economic leader who's going to do the right things to make sure that the village grows and that those funds are appropriated properly. And so I'm willing to take on that task and responsibility and be accountable for the fund's success, right? It's not, a, it's not all, you know, fun and games and exciting. I actually have the pressure of 11,900 investors plus the outside scrutinizers and the SEC and everything else in between, um, which aren't really real life pressures, but you know, I'm just saying those things are the responsibility and the level of accountability I have. And I embrace that, but we all have a role to embrace in our village growth is my whole point. All the way down to how we greet each other, how we speak to each other. We all have a small to large role, depending on our capacity, of what we gotta play towards contributing towards the village. I don't care if it's an Instagram post, you commenting back on somebody, you supporting, you praying for us, whatever that is, we all got roles to play. It takes a village to build a village. Stop relying on one or two or three people. It's not gonna happen that way. You gonna, like, you gonna burn somebody out. Not just saying me, talking about anyone, anywhere, any leader, any time in history. It takes the whole village. Marcus Garvey's UNIA village was destroyed because of someone being corrupt in the village. Malcolm X's village and his contribution to the, to the village was destroyed by internal feuds within the village. So it's like we have to protect this village at all costs and this mission to repair and save our community. Kings and queens. Next question. Hey, King, this is um, L'Oreal. I'm from Chicago. So I had a couple of points. I just wanted to um, piggyback off of what some of our two colleagues ago said about, and you said about diversity or diversity in reverse. Yes. I feel like when you hit on it at the end, you said inclusion. That's the key, because it's not diver reverse diversity. Reverse diversity is segregation. So right. to that point, it's you know, it's just diversity. That's all it is. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's I, inclusion. Uh, I work in one of the big fours, and our whole motto is that you can get more done with more people in the room. Right. The more different you look at the table, the more ideas you're going to get across mm -hmm. and, and innovation. So that was just my little piece on that. Um, hold on one second. Um, I'm sorry, I'm shopping. It's okay. At the same time, I want, I'm in Chicago, so I was wondering, I know that we're one of the target markets. Um, for the fund, but I want to know were there any deals being listed, looked at or underwritten uh, in Chicago? And the last piece, which is what I should have lived with, was, was I saw you all, I saw you all on the, the circle, I believe. Yes. And I bought in right then and there because I got it. I got it got immediately. It. <laughs> I just started a small business. I made good shape of it. And I'm like, I'm going to put to the side out of my profits. I'm going to put to the side so I can do my investment. My company will invest. That's that's. So I can just roll because I got it. That's super dope, Queen. So I want to I want to come back to all those points. So let me hit the Chicago piece first. So Chicago, yes, uh, we're underwriting. Uh, a friend of mine is an investor, actually a former pro, pro, protege, and friend. He's mm -hmm. he he brought us a building, a twelve unit commercial building in Chicago, in an up and coming area. I forgot the area. I don't have my phone in front of me, but I like it. But see. This is the hardest part, I told one of the economic developers in the Atlanta area. Uh, I met with one of the city council people. And the hardest part for me, because I come from an investment and developer background, is when I see these great deals or potential opportunities, I want to hop in and acquire them or develop them. And I got to smack my own hand and say, no, that's not what we're doing right now. And so what I was saying to him or to anyone in Chicago is if you have any great projects, relationships with the cities, with the receivership board, if you've got good deals that in inventory that have developers or investors attached, we are interested in helping them fund their deals. This particular okay. deal in Chicago didn't have any developer attached, and it's like I would have to and we would have to take on the project management, the acquisition and development of the project. Mm -hmm. And this was a slam dunk, like mm -hmm. we get it for a million and a half, or I think it was when we get it for a million, needed about a half million of work, and it'd be worth two million, two, or two and a half million. All sounded good, but who's gonna facilitate that? Because it ain't gonna be me. So 
we want to make sure we have astute and qualified investors and developers at the table that we can support as a Tulsa Real Estate Fund from a financial uh, funding or, or JV perspective. So that was that, that one. To your diversity okay. point. Can I just say something? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can I just say something? Mm -hmm. So I used to work for the Department of Planning and Development with the city. Okay. But one of those things that is really near and dear to me is this gentrification that is happening. It's quiet. It's been going on for the last 10 years from the east and the south side of Chicago, where now they want to um, delete that. You know? They want to what? They let it get, they want the lakefront back. Gotcha. My family historically is from um, South Shore. My grandparents had their home for 50 years until their death. So I'm all for the library coming. I'm all for property values increasing, but not at the cost of the legacy re residents who built the community when nobody else wanted to be there anymore. Like they're literally having meetings to explain to the community why gentrification is a good thing. <laughs> My problem with that is you didn't have these meetings. 40, 50 years ago, when everybody started leaving. Right. You ain't cared then. So I'm sorry, that was just my piece. No, I, I, <laughs> another great point. Um, so I'm going to come back to that. So I do want to say to your diversity point earlier that, yeah, that's, that's my point. I know it's a sensitive subject for us because of how badly we've been treated as a community by others and and... But you're right. With different perspectives and different experiences, with more people in a room, you can accomplish more. Although I, tr I believe that our people um, are some of the most talented, innovative, uh, creative people, resilient people on the planet. Um, Agreed. And historically and scientifically, we're the first to give life to civilization and math and science and everything else. Um, mm -hmm. But we also have learned that many of the greatest developments in, in life and in history and in science and math and all those other areas as well have come from a smorgasbord of ideas and, and piggybacking ideas and in some instances maybe stolen ideas, but still um, with inclusion and with contribution from different walks of life there is a special synergy and magic there. That 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 is, that is a fact. Um, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that just that, so let's skip on from there because I might talk myself too deep in there. Uh, the other <laughs> point <laughs> is that we do appreciate you. Uh, I'm glad you got to see Sister Circle. I'm glad that you got it. You understood it. Um, I hope you saw how my waves were spinning um, <laughs> on the couch. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'm glad that you were. <laughs> But no, I'm glad that you did that you did get it and that you bought in, and we look forward to having you as a part of uh, the, you know, the T-Ref family. And um, yeah, anything that we can do in Chicago, we definitely want to do it. We want more public-private partnerships. We want to allow the city and the residents to participate in the fund so that if gentrification or development is happening, we have a stake in the profits of those developments. Right. And right. we are controlling more of our own neighborhoods. So that, that is a, a function of the fund. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, I'm all the way on board with that. If I could just do a shameless plug. Go for um, it. If everyone who likes shea butter or knows someone who likes shea butter, whipped shea butter, um, you can follow me. You can um, order from me. Directly follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm Shea Butter Shea. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at all butter, B-U-T-T-E-R-D. You can all buttered up. Okay. All buttered up dot com is my website. Whoops, Shea Butter. Everybody who touches it, who experiences it live, they want it. It don't matter what nationality they are. They're like, I need that right now. Send me some. Ar Ar Ernestine, Mor Ernestine Morrison wants some. <laughs> <laughs> she, she in the background smiling. Right, thank you. Thank right, you. Thank you, Queen. Send us a DM or something. Say Shea Butter. Send it to the office. Right. Can you send the office some complimentary butter? Cause we got we got some elbows around here. <laughs> These office desks is hard on the elbows. We need. Right. <laughs> uh, I'll take a couple more questions and we out of here. What we got? What we got? And thank you guys for all the love and support. And it is a great platform hey. to plug your business. Yes, sir. King King. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. King J. What's going on, my brother? Nothing much, King. I'm better. I'm, I'm better than I was yesterday. I, I, 
I appreciate you put doing this. Uh, I've been talking about my father for the longest. He's he, he a part of that generation. Come through, went through the '80s boom, and uh, he, he 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 couldn't see the vision of of, of uh, what we were going to do as a culture to kind of combat what has historically been, like you said, an economic suppression. But I really, 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 really thankful for you bringing this bringing this uh, platform together for the community. Absolutely, thank you, King, so much. You know. That being said, my name is Daryl. I, I am a broker, uh, Sunshine Acquisition here in Tampa, in the Tampa, Florida area. We have an acquisitions team. Uh, we acquire commercial and residential real estate. And what I've been doing, Jay, I've been moving properties uh, to my, my investors, uh, as well as listing properties with our investors. But I did hear you say that you're, you guys take equity position in deals. So if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, you're actually looking to finance projects. Is that the case? Yes, sir. The fund okay. finance. With that being said, uh, so is it is it is it kind of like if I'm, if I'm understanding it properly, is it kind of like a hard money position? No, it depends on the project. It is an opportunity for us to participate in sponsors' deals uh, in their capital stack in whichever way is a win-win for everybody. Some of it would be. Uh, preferred equity. It could be mezzanine or gap financing. It could be uh, a soft money or hard money loan. It could be a bridge loan. It could be a flat out just equity partnership or JV. It just depends on the, the opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. That's good to know. So, so are you guys targeting, do you have anybody on the ground, boots on the ground in the Tampa market or the Central Florida market between Tampa and Orlando at all? We don't, and I, I, would, I, I hear a lot of great things about the Tampa market. One of my brothers, Kenny Rushing, I know does well out there uh, on a single-family front. Oh, I know Kenny. Yeah, if, uh -huh. if, if you want to send your info over, I would love to have some of our acquisitions team have some, some dialogue with you or even myself about opportunities to participate in some deals out there if you or your firm or investment partners have opportunities that could be fruitful for the fund. We, we would love to, you know, entertain some, some, some dialogue. And we have a really simple application process for deals that might be hot and ready where you can apply for them and we scrub them, underwrite them, and if they're good, we send them to processing. Wonderful, wonderful. So it could be anything from a portfolio loan with some mixed use to commercial. All that. Kind of Land, yep. All, All that. that. Wonderful. Wonderful, Jay. Well, um... Well, I guess that's it. So info at uh, the info at, at uh, Tulsa Real Estate Fund is, is the email I need to reach out to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Info at Tulsa Real Estate Fund dot com. And, and, and feel you free. And, and, and we get a backlog sometimes. I mean, and the team is all here. They're going to get on it. But if you don't hear back from us uh, expeditiously, feel free to follow up with me or anyone on the team. I am. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Before our next question, I want to say this, um, and thank you, sir, for your contribution, King. Um, so tonight we talked about Unify and Thrive and a five-year plan. And so I want to talk about a little bit about what the five-year plan looks like. This is why I was talking about the purpose of Tulsa and getting us all, we're all getting settled in. This is a very new initiative for myself and the team. Um, and when I think about the five-year plan, what it is, the first-year plan and our first goal of this fund is get to the second fund. That's our first goal. And part of the five-year plan is getting this from a functionality, from an operational, from a system standpoint, is just getting a compliance standpoint and performance standpoint, just getting everything right and narrative standpoint, just getting it right. This is how you grow a company and scale a company. This is how you create a multi-billion dollar empire is just get the first one right. And so what I mean by right is this is making sure that we're all on the same page and understand that we as a crowd are investing money together in this pot to be able to then invest that money to members of our community or to other socially responsible investors or developers who have deals that are qualified, that are performing or high yielding or have equity or, or, or historical impact or significance for us to participate and own those deals through private equity partnerships, which is like joint ventures or funding or all those different fancy terms I named. And so we want to pair 
local governments, with celebrities, with influencers, with the everyday crowd to create this pot in which we control the investment and capital deployment decisions and to support these minority investors and, uh, investors and developers uh, into these projects or developers maybe even of other ethnicities who have socially responsible deals or opportunities or high yielding opportunities to fund with loans to participate in. What I mean by that is this. If someone comes with a slam dunk hotel that's not in an urban area, but has equity or has the proper residual income or is a good portfolio play, real estate play, and the person's not of African descent, and the property, the hotel, the farmland, the buildings, the bulk list, or whatever it is, the inventory, is not in an urban area, but it makes good sense for us all to own it, we are going to go own it. This is the diversity of the fund, is that as people of African descent, which seems to be the majority makeup of our fund and our fund management, it doesn't mean that we can't own and control assets in other people's communities the same way they control them in ours. We can't, and I'm not going to allow us to be as the fund visionary and leader to be so basic minded where everything is, we're going to be diverse because diversity and portfolio gives you balance and gives you the most chance for success. If all we buy are just assets in the hood, then that may not be the best for our performance. But if we diversify buying and redeveloping our hoods or neighborhoods and owning and controlling our neighborhoods with leveraging that with maybe some A-class assets or other opportunities, maybe some franchises, maybe some of you got franchises out there that have real estate attached, we want to be the rich uncle, the private equity partner, the capital partner that you all can count on to be able to fund and participate where we all have fractional ownership and shares in all these different investments. And we all can celebrate our ownership throughout our families. We can go to Thanksgiving or to Kwanzaa or to Malcolm X Day or to Juneteenth celebration and we can say, yo, listen, I got 107 units in my portfolio. I got a hotel in my portfolio. I got two Chick-fil-A franchises in my portfolio. I got this in my portfolio. All these different things, but you invested $500, $1,000, or $10,000. But you have fractional ownership of all these assets that our families never had an opportunity to have ownership of before. I see your three minutes, Javi. I see it. <laughs> EJ, stop egging them on. I know where this, this energy is coming from. I know exactly what's going on. So the point is the five-year plan of the fund is for us to manage and control over a billion in assets in the next five years that we do the same thing. We got our own big pot made up of institutional money, private money, public money, international money, different ethnicity money, all this money, capital. And then we go strategically deploy the capital where it makes sense for us in our growth, in our redevelopment, in our advancement, in our mission to save and repair the village. That's the five year plan. And within this five-year plan, we show our community, and, it's, and I want to make this last point, and I'll close. I'm going to take one more question, and we're going to close, actually. But one of the callers said earlier how their family couldn't believe that we could do something like this. And this is the trauma of our oppression, of Jim Crow, of our enslavement, of our dehumanization, of our uh, loss of dignity and, and self-respect, is that... You can see, if you heard 11,000 or 1,100 Asian people got together and raised $12 million, you'd be like, yeah, that's, them, that's, hey, that's, that's amazing. That's what they do. You wouldn't be shocked. You wouldn't be, well, hey, okay. That, that's all? 12? That's all they can do? If you saw that XYZ Russians got together and raised XYZ million dollars, you wouldn't question it. You'd be like, hey, that's, okay, Russians, that's what that's, it makes sense. It could be white people, Europeans of any region, descent. Even Latinos or Mexicans. But when it comes to us, people of African descent, pulling our dollars together and raising money, you're like, no, 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 I, I can't believe that. Think about the self, it's not even self-hate, but the lack of self-dignity. In respect to think that you and those who look like you are capable and competent enough 
and trigestral enough and honest enough to be able to do the same thing you would expect from every other nationality. That's one of my one-minute clips for Instagram, by the way. Got to cut some down, but that's going to be it. But think about that, though. Why is it that you could have no problem accepting the Asian community, the Latino community, the white or European community, or any other community raising capital and think nothing of it? Like, so? That's what they do. And the first time that we do it on a national level in the last hundred years, you just you can't believe it. Can't be true. Can't be honest. Can't be integrity. There's got to be something wrong. Why don't you see enough greatness in yourself? Most of that, I believe, is because you don't know enough of your history, and enough of our history, and enough of the greatness we come from. We started this math thing. We started this civilization thing. We started this trade and barter thing. We started this. Why would you expect anything less than us to do this? Don't do this to me, EJ. No, I run this. I end when I'm ready. Next caller, please. Now I'm taking two more callers. Keep talking. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, King. Actually, I was just trying to get some information from, um, there was a king on the line from Tampa, and I'm down in the Tampa area, too, and I was just trying to see if there was some way I can connect with that king man, and I missed his information. Okay, so what I would suggest, if you two could go on our Tulsa Real Estate Fund Facebook fan page, comment on this post, and use that as a forum to exchange information and be able to connect I would do that if I were you, is just say, hey, I'm a Tampa guy, I'm a Tampa king, and I'm here on Facebook or Instagram, and anybody that wants to connect, including the king who spoke up was a broker, you know, announce yourself, and I'm sure he'll be checking that page as well. And, you know, I think that's a great way for you guys to connect. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. So we'll go to one more comment or question before we head out for tonight. Tulsa Talks Thursday's yeah. live podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, what's going on, my brother? How you feeling today? I'm well, King. Thank you. How are you? I am well. Thank you for taking my question. So my question is more in regards of the uh, real estate investing. How are you analyzing your deals, my brother? Is it more focused on cash flow, the cap rate, future appreciation? What are you looking at when you're analyzing or underwriting your deals, my brother? That is a great question, King King. So thank you. every deal comes over with a different opportunity. And okay. our underwriting metrics or, or guidelines, basically, we understand that at the very least, our hurdle is 13.5%, right? Um, and you're talking about ROI, is that cash on cash? Yes. What are you talking about? Yes, cash on cash, ROI, right? Okay. Whether there's debt involved or leverage or whatever, but our cash invested needs to, at minimum, earn 8%. Uh, as, as our minimum hurdle, because remember, we have an 8% preferred return to pay to the crowd, our partners. So we at minimum need to meet an 8% hurdle. And then we want to collectively, from an IRR standpoint, right, we want to be able to, from the cash flows of a deal, however those cash flows happen, whether it's residual income, preferred equity payments, debt finance payments, interest-only payments, whatever that looks like, we need to be at an 8%. And then we want to look at what equity or appreciation that we expect from that deal or have in that deal as well. So that's also part of the IRR or internal rate of return, right? So if we have a deal that's gaining us, say, 11% per year or 8% per year, or it could be 5% per year, but I'll take the 5% cap rate or return on investment per year if I know we have, say, a 30% return on the flip side in regards to equity we've accrued. So we balance off looking at the total investment return based on all cash flows, all points and fees. If we're charging points or fees for participating in a deal, we may say, hey, look, we'll loan you the money, but we need you know, four points and XYZ interest and application fee and whatever else, right? So whatever total income comes out from the deal. Are you referring to the bank right now or are you referring to us? I'm referring to us 
because we have the opportunity to offer debt financing as well as equity. So some deals. Uh, well, I'm more I'm more interested in, like I said, how you're underwriting deals per se. Um, but, but, I'm, I'm very new to I'm very new to the real estate commercial side, so I just want to understand uh, how, again, how you're underwriting the deal. Now, I that, I'm I'm sure you're familiar with something called the solo K. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I have some funds there, and as the year is ending, I need to distribute those funds so I can reduce my tax bill. I'm going to be pretty honest with you. Gotcha. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm trying to figure out if this, and I, I truly appreciate what you did. I actually met you a few times, in uh, a, a few places. We met a few places, believe it or not. So long story short, I, I just want to understand your underwriting criteria. And it sounds like you're saying that on minimum you're looking for 8% and it can go up to wherever it goes up to. Uh, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, yes. At the end of the day, we, we, we need to meet at least an 8% to 13.5% hurdle. That's our minimum requirement to meet what we feel are great opportunities for our investors. Any profits on top of that is gravy, and we split those profits 50-50 between the fund, and the fund, fund management and the fund investors. Understood. Now, in the future, because uh, I do believe that we're getting really close to a, a correction or a pullback in the market, what are your ideas of what, what is going to happen with the fund during that time, my brother? Oh, that's going to be an amazing time for the fund when the market goes through its correction, because now you're going to have a you're going to have a time where banks are going to be. Uh, foreclosing on properties, cities will be taking properties, the interest rates will be up, there'll be less capital out there, um, et cetera. And that will put us in the driver's seat that we haven't been in in the last crash or last market or last correction where properties will be pennies on a dollar and we'll be in a cash-rich position to be able to acquire those properties at pennies on a dollar to hold on to them and wait for the mar market to recorrect in regards to appreciate and for us to benefit from being in, in a, in a, a well-capitalized position to be able to acquire properties in such an aggressive uh, manner. And so I look forward actually to the correction so that we can be in a, a hold position and acquisition position for us to cash out on or uh, refinance and re-leverage in future years. That makes sense? That made 100% um, and I guess my last question is, and this is more pertaining to you, Mr. Morrison. Sure thing. Um, mentors. Maybe you may have answered this before. Who are your mentors, though, if you have a mentor? That's a great question. Uh, I do have some business advisors. That's a two for me, huh? What do you say? That's a two for two or is that three for three? <laughs> it might be three for three, Ken. You, you came with the goodies in the bag for the last joint. Um, I'm glad I was able to get through. <laughs> absolutely. So, no, I, I do have some business advisors um, who advise me. I can't say I have a true and blue mentor. Um, mm -hmm. There's some people that I know I can count on, I can rely on. Uh, most are paid advisors or coaches um, within my network. And there's some old mentors who, I, you know, who mentored me in the earlier stages of my career who I still stay connected with. Uh, but they're not like, say, my mentor for this next phase of my life. I think that is something I'm waiting for God to, to, to open that door up to, to who's going to be the person that can help from an executive standpoint or entrepreneurial standpoint take me to my next levels. I do have some personal kind of spiritual mentors, though, uh, and people that I, you know, I rely on for personal development. Understood. Well, I All do right. greatly appreciate you for taking the time to answer all my questions. Have a beautiful night, my family. You too, Thank Ken. You. All right, so Toast Talk Thursdays, every single Thursday. This is a live podcast where you can ask questions and answers and kick it. Let's have mogul talk, legacy talk, repair talk, village talk, tref life. Um, this is, again, bigger than an economic vehicle. It's bigger than an organization. It's bigger than a fund. Uh, this fund is just a financial instrument for the repair that's much needed in the African community in America and abroad. Um, shout out to all of our ancestors. I think every episode we should do a historical kind of shout out. Let's we'll add that to our thing. So I want to shout out just all of our ancestors who, who shed blood, sweat, tears, lost limbs, lost lives, lost freedom for us to be in this position today. And I, my biggest way of thanking them 
is putting my own freedom, my own life, my own blood, my own sweat, my own tears on the line. Um, because it will be selfish of us, very selfish of us, to misuse our ancestors in a way that we capitalize off of all of their sacrifices and then contribute and then our village still not be repaired, still not saved, still not liberated, and we don't finish the work. And we make no sacrifices of our own to finish that work. So if you love what Marcus Garvey did, if you love what Malcolm X did, Honorable Elijah Muhammad did, Rosa Parks did, Harriet Tubman did, Nat Turner did, Fred Hampton did, and so many others, if you love what they did, then live a life like they lived. Uh, last updates. Okay. There's an email that went out on updating your P.O. box, uh, updating your P.O. box to an actual address. Right. So anyone who invested in a fund and you have not got your certificate, you're not fully funded yet. It's because and you put a P.O. box in your investment. No P.O. boxes. We need a real address in order to process your investment. That email did go out to you. Please check the emails. Also, certificates were sent out. Uh, send an email to info at TulsaRealEstateFund.com. If you have not received your certificate, check your spam and promo folders first. But if you still haven't received one, then please email info at TulsaRealEstateFund.com to get your certificate. Uh, we have been clearing a lot of investments that have been caught up in the AML and KYC checks that we have in our compliance. Make sure you're reading your emails and you're just following directions and, and doing what you can do so that we can get you fully funded and a part of the TREF fam. If you haven't invested, it's not too late. If you already invested, you still can invest more, $500 minimum to be a part of the fund. We are taking our time. God has blessed me to have lost $150,000 in the past by rushing through deals because of pressures of other people and what I thought they thought I should do. And because I took that $150,000 loss of a lesson, we now don't have to lose in that kind of way. I realized that when you are investing, regardless of what other people think and outside opinions, when you're the fund manager or the sponsor, it's important that you make the most financially astute and wise decisions, regardless of the peer pressures of the world. And so I take those life experiences with me to this position as fund manager, and I and we are carefully and wisely, methodically and astutely and diligently combing through these deals and opportunities and making sure that we put our best foot forward in our acquisitions. If you don't know what deals we have, we're underwriting right now, we're sending you out an email tomorrow with a seven minute video link explaining the deals from the Black Wall Street Ball and telling you about the over 300 units of real estate property, real property that we are looking to participate in, uh, over $29 million in deals being underwritten right now by a Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Uh, and we are hopeful that we all can be owners in many of those deals as we go through our due diligence and underwriting period and we're still accepting deals every single day. Uh, Again, thank you all. Every Thursday, live Q&A, Tulsa Talk Thursday podcast. Thanks to Queen Jazz for moderating, uh, King Avery for holding the live stream phone and getting his muscles up, you know. <laughs> King Jean, Queen JP, Queen EJ for keeping us on track, on time. Uh, shout out to you, honey. You, baby. King Javi in the building. Uh, on the ones and twos. Uh, thanks to everybody though, who makes this possible. Thanks to all our supporters. Thanks to the Treff Life founders. Uh, everyone else in the office who does so much who's not here right now. Um, takes a village to build a village. See y'all next Thursday. Peace. Treff Life. <laughs>